Thank you for having me. Um, as Brett said, water is probably the major issue we're faced with in dealing with climate change in terms of protecting a resource that we're going to have to uh, manage really differently than we have in the past. And as somebody who works in water quality, uh, I know we have a little piece of that puzzle. A lot of it de deals with quantity um, and deals with other issues. And I do have to do a brief disclaimer that I am water quality, not water rights. Um, I'm not responsible for the frost protection regulation, um, but really interested in the water quality aspects for the North Coast region. What I wanted to give you today is from my view in working in water quality, and I've spent my professional career working in water quality, how I see the principles that we've been working on in water quality, how they fit together with the need to adapt and change to protect uh, and have resilient communities as climate changes. Uh, so I want to go through a couple of principles and then talk a little bit about uh, some strategies and tools. And not a complete list, this is very much uh, something that is worth thinking about. We haven't put in writing in any way, but very much, uh, I call it a work in progress. So I'm really pleased to be here today and see all the presentations this morning were just fabulous. Um, and to talk with people and all of you in this room who are interested in this topic and contributing to it. Uh, three big principles that come for our office would be to enhance aquifer recharge, uh, preserve and enhance the resilience of our stream and river ecosystems, and conserve and reuse water to the extent that we possibly can. With that then come a series of strategies. We want, I think it's really, really important to preserve, preserve our working landscape. Uh, the sort of unifying theme here in a number of areas that we work in is how do we keep the land so that it is able to absorb rainfall, recharge, so slowing the amount of water that runs off and absorbing it into the ground for aquifer recharge and moving slowly through the system. So keeping the landscape in a working landscape helps, uh, keeping natural landscape helps. We need to also, as we develop and redevelop in the next hundred years, minimize the amount of land that we cover with impervious work uh, cover. So instead of using asphalt, you know, move to gravel, use to asphalt that is, allows rainfall to seep through. We need to preserve our floodplains and wetlands. This is really hard in a developing county. Uh, that's always good land to develop, people seem to feel. And it's when you, prices of land are so high, you want to encroach more and more towards the streams. But it's really, really important to keep those floodplains free so that they can absorb the water, recharge the aquifers, and maintain the stream integrity. Uh, so to minimize, to slow down the runoff, to attenuate floods downstream, as well as prevent erosion, and keep the water clean. Um, we also have, over the last several decades, done quite a bit to, pr to encourage the reuse of wastewater. It's water that we use and flush down the toilet, and instead of just flushing it into the stream where it really doesn't belong, to reuse that water in ways that are beneficial to the community. And we have, a, in this county, a very high rate of reuse of water thanks to decades worth of investment by the community. We also need to encourage using less water, and there's a lot of uh, push in this county also to, to do that, and anything that we can do to help that, we sign on to. And we also um, want, have to continue to keep water away from waste in all of the many ways that we can do that, whether it's you know downspouts, keeping water from a dairy barn from mixing with the waste to not putting our uh, medicine down the toilet. I mean, it's a whole range of activities that we need to, as a community, work on it, just not pollute the water in the first place. And to do that, we've got a number of tools, and we've got regular, I work for a regulatory agency. I mean, we, we come up with rules. and. I have to confess that I am, as I have gone in my career now for 30 some years working with rules, I am becoming less and less enchanted with them, and particularly in a community like Sonoma. The, of course, there, is all, there always are need for rules. And some of the things that we do, and I think the community is doing really well, is the storm, stormwater program and our partners of the city and the county in implementing um, 
design and programs to keep stormwater clean and then keeping it from um, moving really quickly across the landscape, slowing it down so it, it can both percolate into the groundwater basin and then enter the streams in a more uh, stable way and doesn't, to not undercut the banks of the stream. Um, we also have encouraged wastewater reuse and will continue to do so through our wastewater permitting program with the municipalities. And it's really encouraging to see that we're really turning a corner there to see, seeing increasingly that that wastewater is of value. And while it's not, doesn't pay for itself or even close to it yet, that there may come a day where it's more in balance than it is right now. But having said that, and my comment on rules only go so far, and what we're really talking about is how do we change how we behave? And rules maybe mo motivate us to change our behavior, but really I think each one of us is really motivated by knowing what they need to do and knowing that it serves a purpose in our society and helps our family, ourselves, and our community. And increasingly, I think, in the regulatory world, it's, we need to move more towards the outreach, more to how do we help people understand the water quality part of their world. I mean, talking to Brett before this, that you know, he's got a farm to run, you know, and keeping clean water is important to him. How do I make sure that the water that comes off his farm is clean? I mean, he wants to do that too, but how do I do that in a way that it's not the, the cuts by a thousand little cuts? Um, and that's the challenge to figure out how we do that in the next decade or so, because I think the world is changing with regard to how we approach regulation. And I'll leave that with you to think about a bit, because as a regulator, I think we've kind of hit a wall, and we're going to need to come back and consolidate, and we're going to need to think about what we need to do in the future in order to change people's behavior besides the heavy em emphasis that has been placed on regulations. Thank you.